In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about how matrices can be seen as linear transformations. And uh, in general, it's true that any, or line any linear transformation can be represented as a matrix, and any matrix represents a linear transformation. Um, but uh, what that means from sort of an abstract algebra perspective is, is exactly what it says. What it means from an intuitive perspective really only applies to things like R2 and R3. So we're just going to take a couple examples so you can get, get a feel for what, what that means. So in this particular video, we're only going to do uh, matrices which map from R2 to R2. In other words, we're just going to do 2 by 2 matrices. So uh, let's just take a couple examples and see what that means. So we'll start off with an example of a matrix, a simple one, 2, 0, 0, 2, and I'm trying to understand why that is a linear transformation. Okay, so if it's a linear transformation, that means it does something to some point uh, or some, something in, in the Cartesian plane. I can take any point in the Cartesian plane and I can represent it by a vector. Uh, so let's, let's just pick some arbitrary vector uh, and we'll call the coordinates of that point of that vector x, y. Now, so what happens if I take my matrix uh, 2, 0, 0, 2, and I multiply it by the column vector x, y. Well, just by matrix multiplication, we've got 2 by 2 times 2 by 1, which means that our answer is going to be uh, 1 by 1. So 2 by 2, 2, 2 is the number of terms in each we used to get each, each thing. So we have 2 times x and 0 times y. There's two terms. That's what that 2 represents. And this first 2 and the last two represent the dimensions of the output. So in this particular case, our output is going to be 2 by 1. And uh, if we do the multiplication, the first coordinate is going to be 2x plus 0y, or just 2x. And the second coordinate is going to be 0x plus 2y, or just 2y. So if I take 2x, if here's x, and if I go out to 2x, 2x is somewhere about here, and if I take y, which is somewhere roughly here, and double that, I get 2y. So my new vector is somewhere out here. That it looks like this. Now, convince yourself that this is exactly double the original vector. If I take the original vector and I put it end to end, I get double. And uh, you know that you don't, shouldn't have to do a whole lot of convincing there because all I did was double the x-coordinate and double the y-coordinate. You can see from the output that my new vector is 2 times. So this linear transformation, 2, 0, 0, 2, turns out to be what's called a, a dilation or a stretch. And in general, any matrix of the form uh, A, 0, 0, A, or as a matter of fact, if it's any diagonal matrix where all the diagonals are a certain value, that's a dilation by A. Let's take a different example. Here, again, I have my vector x, y, but this time the matrix that I want to examine as a linear transformation is 0, 1, 1, 0. Uh, this one, if I take it in again, if I multiply it by x, y, uh, I'm going to get some result like this, and I get 0, x plus y, so I get y, and here I get x plus 0, y, so I get x x-coordinate becomes my y-coordinate, and then my y-coordinate becomes my x-coordinate. This vector ends up being a reflection. If you remember from your study of functions, we know that the uh, we know that when I switch the x and y coordinates, which is what you can see happen here, the x and y coordinates switch, when I switch the x and y coordinates, that the effect of that is to reflect over the line y equals x. So this particular matrix turns out to take a, a point x, y and reflect it over the line y equals x. Uh, okay, so we have rotation, I'm oh, no, sorry, we have um, dilations and we have reflections. All right, for our last example, instead of, uh, instead of transforming a matrix, we're actually gonna transform the unit circle. There it is, so put my unit circle on, put my circle on the grid, and the transformation I'm gonna do is I'm going to do the matrix three, zero, zero, two. Okay, now this looks sort of similar to a dilation, but the three and the two are different. So you might be asking yourself, what effect is that going to have? So let's take our point, we'll multiply, and you can see very quickly that this is going to be 3x 
comma 2y. Right. So let's, this is the equation of my unit circle is x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. So let's say I had a coordinate, a point on here. We'll call it uh, a comma b. Right. So that means that a squared plus b squared is equal to 1. Now, if I transform it, I'm going to take a and b, and I'm going to map them to two new points, a prime and b prime. And we know that a prime, b prime, is equal to uh, 3a comma 2b. All right, well, what do we know about a prime and b prime? Well, that means that a prime equals 3a, uh, and b prime is equal to 2b, or equivalently, we can write that as uh, a prime over 3 is equal to a, and uh, b prime over 2 is equal to b. Well, since a squared plus b squared is equal to 1, we know that a prime over 3, since that's equal to a squared, b prime over 2 squared, since that's equal to b, here we really have a squared plus b squared is equal to 1, so we get a prime over 3 squared plus b prime over 2 squared is equal to 1. This, uh, you, you recognize, is the equation of an ellipse. If my a prime becomes my x coordinate and my b prime becomes my y coordinate, which is exactly what they are, I have x over 3 squared plus y over 2 squared is equal to 1. And that is an ellipse which has a, a major axis of 6 and a minor axis of 4, where the major axis from here to here is 6 and the minor axis from here to here is 4. But in particular, if this circle, the unit circle, has radius 1, then what I've done is I've stretched my unit circle in this direction. Uh, I've, I've tripled it. So now instead of going from 0 to 1, it goes from 0 to 3. And then here in this direction, I've doubled it. So it goes 2. So I've stretched it in x. I've stretched it in x by 3. And I've stretched it in y by 2. So not only do you see here that we have uh, a way of interpreting matrices as linear transformations, we also gain a little bit of understanding about ellipses. You can see uh, an ellipse is just a unit circle which has been dilated in the x and y directions by different values. Okay, for one last example, let's actually, uh, rotation matrices are, are really sort of important. And it's, it's important that we have a handle on those. So let's, let's discuss what's the matrix for a rotation by an angle theta. All right, so how are we going to approach this? Well, in this particular case, we're actually going to approach it like the textbook. Right? The textbook does uh, a nice job of explaining how matrices are related to functions, and we're going to exploit their definition. So according to, we know that, that this is going to be a function from R2 to R2. We want to map a vector in the plane to another vector in the plane. The book tells you is that if I take my function f, say x, it's going to map to some you know, x prime, y prime, some coordinate here. But in particular, it tells us that if I take the uh, basis vectors, the f of, say, 1, 0, that's going to give me the first column of my, uh, that's going to give me the first column of my matrix. And then if I do f of 0, 1, that's going to give me the second column of my matrix. So that's actually exactly what we're going to do. Evaluate the function at these two places and see what we get. So the first thing we want to do is we want to evaluate uh, this guy. We want to evaluate 1, 0. So here I have uh, my vector 1, 0, which I'm just going to draw really quickly. Pretty simple. It goes right along the x-axis yeah, along 1. I want to take that vector and I want to rotate it by some angle theta. Okay, so I rotate it by some angle theta. Well, if the point here, this is pretty simple trigonometry, if the coordinates of this endpoint here are 1, 0, that means that the length of my vector is 1, and when I rotate it to an angle theta, it's still on the unit circle. Uh, I know that my coordinates are, are just the trig, uh, the values of the function evaluated at theta. So I've got uh, the x coordinate is going to be cosine of theta, and the y coordinate is going to be sine of theta. Okay, so that's what I get when I multiply, when I rotate, uh, when I apply my rotation by an angle theta to the first unit vector. I get cosine of theta sine theta. 
Now, what if I started with zero, 1? What if I started with the vertical vector, the vertical unit vector? Again, I took this guy and I rotated it by the same angle of theta. Now, we're just going to eyeball it here to see that we do the same, but you get the idea. So I rotate it by the same angle of theta. Now, this one, uh, same kind of idea, this particular one, when I rotate it, I know that the coordinates used to be 0, 1, but now when I rotate it, this angle is, well, in particular, this triangle is congruent to this triangle because they're both right triangles and uh, this is the angle. Uh, both of them have this angle here is theta just because that angle is theta. So we know that that angle is theta and we know that they both have hypotenuse of length 1 uh, so we know that these triangles are congruent which means that if this was if this side right here was sine of theta then that means that this side the length of it is sine theta but it's actually in the negative direction so it's negative sine theta. The height is cosine of theta. So if we're going to write the coordinates at this point, we actually end up with an x coordinate of negative sine theta and a y coordinate of cosine theta. Okay, so that means that we've got negative sine theta, cosine theta. Alright, so according to the, uh, the work done in your textbook, then the first column should be cosine theta sine theta, and the second column should be negative sine theta cosine theta for any rotation uh, for any rotation matrix. And if, uh, if you check that out, it actually does work. Let's do an example real quick. Let's say that theta is pi over 6. So we've got that uh, uh, cosine of theta is root 3 over 2, and sine of theta is 1 half, so we get negative 1 half right here, and positive 1 half right there, and we fill in the root 3 over 2. Now, if I were to take that matrix, and I were to multiply it by some coordinate, let's, let's say negative 1, 0. We're going to do a, a point in the circle just to see. We end up with... Uh, negative root 3 over 2 for the x-coordinate, and then we've got uh, negative 1 half, and uh, root plus, yeah, negative 1 half. So if the vector started off over here, uh, it would end up at negative root 3 over 2 for the x-direction, and negative 1 half, which, if you remember your trig values, that is just the same vector rotated by 30 degrees. So we have our, our uh, rotation matrix for a rotation by 30 degrees. All right. That's it for this one. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.